Mitt Romney spoke to the NAACP convention in Houston, Texas today. The Republican candidate delivered a speech short on specifics and long on tepid generalities. Some may wonder why a Republican would bother to campaign in the African-American community and to address the NAACP. One reason, of course, is that I hope to represent all Americans of every race, creed, and sexual orientation. From the poorest to the richest and everyone in between. Romney was greeted with polite applause throughout the speech and even got some encouraging organ music. I can't promise you that I'll agree on every issue. But I do promise that your hospitality to me today will be returned. We will know one another. And we will work to common purpose. The audience gave Romney their attention and a fair hearing. At the end of the speech, the crowd respectfully offered a standing ovation to the candidate. The attendees obviously gave Romney some credit for showing up, unlike the previous president, George W. Bush, who openly shunned any invitations to the NAACP convention. But there was one moment where Mitt Romney delivered an actual policy position. The reception, well, that was not very warm. If our goal is jobs, we have to stop spending over a trillion dollars more than we take in every year. And so, and so to do that, I'm going to eliminate every non-essential, expensive program I can find. That includes Obamacare. And I'm going to work to reform and save... Fourteen seconds. That's how long Mitt Romney was booed for saying that he will repeal Obamacare. Reporters on the scene said the reaction was stunning. I have not heard that kind of sustained booing for Mitt Romney during the course of this campaign up until what happened today at the NAACP. I, I don't think it, it, it really is sort of overstating it. This was perhaps one of the most negative reactions Mitt Romney has had in the course of his 2012 presidential campaign. After the speech, Romney said he expected to be booed by the crowd. He told Fox News the crowd was with him more than they were against him. At the end of my speech, having a standing ovation was uh, was generous and hospitable on the part of the audience. And I believe that while we disagree on some issues like Obamacare, on a lot of issues, people see eye to eye. They want someone to get the economy going again. African-Americans want someone to get the economy going, no doubt. But they don't want Mitt Romney. In a recent poll, NBC News put out along with Wall Street Journal, only 1% of African-American voters want Mitt Romney to be the president of the United States. The NAACP released a statement thanking the candidate Mitt Romney for coming out and pointed out how little support Romney has in the African-American community. It read, unfortunately, much of his agenda is at odds with what the NAACP stands for, whether the issue is equal access to affordable health care, reforming our education system, or the path forward on marriage equality. One audience member told BuzzFeed, you cannot possibly talk about jobs for black people at the level he's coming from. He's talking about entrepreneurship, savings accounts. Black people can barely find a way to get back and forth from work. African-American voters have no reason to trust Mitt Romney, especially when he says things like this. In June, while the overall unemployment rate remained stuck at 8.2 percent, the unemployment rate for African-Americans actually went up from 13.6 percent to 14.4 percent. Yes, unemployment in the African-American community has gone up. But you see, the devil's in the details. From 2008 to 2010, African-Americans made up more than 21 percent of the public sector workforce. There are 30 percent more likely to work in the public sector than non-black workers. Check out this number. 636,000. That's how many public sector jobs have been lost while Republicans have been calling for eliminating more and more government employment. Mitt Romney's solution for the economy is to keep cutting public sector jobs. It's popular with the Republicans. Romney's record as governor of Massachusetts is also a pretty tough sell for African Americans. According to the former head of the Boston NAACP, the only time the NAACP had any interaction with the administration and the governor was to protest 
when he eliminated the affirmative action office. Romney never spoke about the Republican voter ID laws being implemented across the country, and he should have. 25% of African Americans lack the proper ID to comply with these laws. Many of these voters are in key swing states like Pennsylvania and Florida. Romney also didn't mention how his tax policy would affect African American families. The median income for African American households in America is at $32,000. Well, Romney's tax plan would raise taxes on those making less than $30,000 a year, while people on the opposite end of the scale they would get a nice tax cut again. Romney didn't talk about any of these things today because he can't. And if he tells the truth about his policies and how they affect the African-American community, he will get booed just like this. If you want a president who will make things better in the African-American community, you are looking at him. You take a look. Well, those voters have taken a look, Mitt Romney, and 99% of them don't like what they see. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Whose policies are better for the African-American community? Text A for President Obama. Text B for Mitt Romney to 622639. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring the results later in the show. I'm joined tonight by Hillary Shelton, Senior Vice President for Advocacy and Policy and the Director of the Washington Bureau of the NAACP and Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. Something interesting developed after the speech today. Mitt Romney says he had a secret meeting with black leaders after his speech today. Here it is. I spoke with a number of uh, African-American leaders after the event, and they said, you know, a lot of folks don't want to say they're not going to be voting for Barack Obama, uh, but they're disappointed in his lack of policies to improve our schools, uh, disappointed in urban policy, disappointed in the economy. All right, Mr. Candidate, give me some names. Who are these people that came up to you and said they're actually going to support you? Hillary Shelton, uh, i got to ask you, do you know about these secret meetings after the speech today? Well, I, I, I'm not surprised. Quite frankly, the campaign actually gave me a list of African-American VIPs that they brought in to the NAACP meeting. So I, we were aware that they had people brought in specifically for the campaign. So I'm sure those are the ones they sat down with, because quite frankly, none of the rank and file NAACP peers met with him. None of them met with him? None of the rank and file NAACP peers. There well, was what a leaders is he talking 20- about? He's talking about people like Niger, Niger Ennis that was brought in from New York. He's talking about uh, 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 African-American Republican politicians that were actually brought in, flown in to the NAACP convention in Houston, Texas, to be there for the president alone. They weren't there before he got there. The few days we meeting, and you know, our, our convention actually started on Sunday. Well, I think a big, I, I think a big key left. here, and I want, I want to clarify, are these gentlemen members of the NAACP? You say that they were flown in. That means that Mitt Romney rigged the crowd to support him there so we could go on TV and say, you know, actually, I got a lot of support among African-American leaders. What's happening here? Well, well it, it, apparently that's what the case is. They're bringing people in that they know will support his agenda from other places that aren't active with the NAACP. These are people that were brought in to actually... Uh, provide the cheering for them so there will be some support along those lines. But, Ed, let me, be, let me be clear. The NAACP is one of the most respectful organizations on the continent. No doubt. Quite frankly, we've heard from many Republican candidates in the past. If they say things we disagree with, usually we just sit on our hands and listen politely. We really do want to hear from all sides. We're nonpartisan. For us, it's about the agenda. It's about what you plan on doing for our communities. So in this case, the problem with and the reason the booing happened in the first place, quite frankly, wasn't because he criticized the Affordable Care Act. It's because of his characterization of it using Barack Obama's name along those lines seemed very disrespectful. So those kind of things are really problematic. If we walk through the issues and agendas that he raised, sure, we disagree with him. And no, we don't think they're in the best interest of the NAACP or the communities we serve. Okay. As a matter of fact... What we do with this particular convention is actually set our policy. And as the, res- as the press release that was released said, these policies are in diametric opposition in many cases with the policy positions of the NAACP. All right. Mayor Nutter, your city is 44 percent African-American, 18 percent of registered African-American voters in Philadelphia. 
they lack a voter ID. Does Mitt Romney need to answer for these voter ID laws? Well, if he's running for president of the United States, he should certainly have something to say about it. And if he cares about uh, the American right to vote, and today he was uh, out at the NAACP, uh, probably uh, said the word African-American or black uh, more times a day uh, than maybe he said in his life, uh, then he should uh, have something to say about it. I mean, increasingly, as we uh, see him on this campaign trail, listen to what he's talking about, uh, I'm increasingly of the opinion uh, that Mitt Romney uh, is a fake. Uh, he is a phony. He is playing a role. Uh, he checked off the box uh, today that he went uh, to the NAACP. Uh, as you just laid out, I had not heard this part of the story. Apparently now he travels uh, with his own uh, posse of black people uh, to uh, then be able to characterize that he had some conversations with some black folks uh, who are supportive uh, of his campaign. But as Hillary just pointed out, they weren't members of the NAACP. I mean, this is the biggest okie doke uh, that has come along uh, in a while. And uh, I mean, it's just part and parcel to uh, the insult uh, that uh, he laid out uh, today, as was already characterized, using the president's name in a disrespectful, uh, insulting fashion as a part of uh, the health care reference. It was clearly a throwaway line. Uh, I heard the audio, uh, and uh, he was almost brushing past it. Uh, and then the, the uh, avalanche of booze uh, came on because of uh, what he was saying. Uh, I mean, this is uh, pretty outrageous uh, as this story continues to develop. Well, it is so like Mitt Romney. This is a man who's been very vague, short on specifics. Now he's telling Fox News that he actually met with uh, black leaders that support him. <laughs> it's, it's just so like right, him. That, he, that apparently he carries around. Yeah. Uh, like, like, I mean, like he carries them in his back pocket and then just pops them out well, uh, in a meeting uh, in an office and says, oh, I, I met with some black people. Does but they weren't the folks that you came to talk to. I mean, this is insane. Well, uh, you're a mayor of a large city, Philadelphia. Yeah. Do, do any of his policies match up with the African-American community? I don't think he's talking about anything that matches up with most of America. Uh, black, white, green, yellow, red. I mean, he was in Philly a couple months back uh, at a school. Uh, and, uh, of course, got his picture taken with uh, some little black children uh, and then started talking about uh, his education uh, views, uh, one of which is that uh, smaller class size uh, is not better for children. I mean, that's just kind of dumb. I mean, every second grader knows better than that, uh, that uh, uh, he cut funding for education when he was governor. That's a fact. Uh, he laid off teachers, firefighters uh, and police officers. That's a fact. Uh, and uh, uh, left his state uh, pretty much in disarray. That's a fact. So uh, he should be coming forward talking about specific plans and ideas. Yeah. It's July. The election is in November. What is his education plan? We don't know. What is his real tax reform plan? We don't know. What is his job creation strategy? We don't know. He wants to spend the entire campaign uh, running around criticizing uh, the great work of President Barack Obama, who has a record. Mitt Romney has no record of doing anything uh, in the black community, has not one leg to stand on uh, in that regard. And I mean, it's it's kind of nutty. Mayor Michael Nutter, you've said a lot tonight, and I think you're spot on. Hillary Shelton, Michael Nutter, great to have you with us tonight here on The Ed Show. Remember to, remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen and share your thoughts on Twitter at Ed Show and on Facebook. We want to know what you think. The greatest lie ever told about President Obama has been smacked down by the simple truth, and we'll bring it to you next. And later, the latest on the whereabouts and well-being of Congressman Jesse Jackson, Jr. There's breaking news on that story. Stay with us. We're right back.